Apple Watch Series 3 4K subscriber giveaway get subscribed let's do it hey guys what is going on the day after the storm we had a pretty pretty bad snow and wind storm and rain here last night and it's now beautiful out see the two down there with the plow on it definitely was out late last night doing some plowing so today's video on my 2019 f350 6.7 power stroke daily driver yes or no i've done the same video pretty much on my 250 and if you watch that video it's going to be you know a lot of the same things on this guy for sure um this is the this is the xlt premium package and my 250 is the lariat ultimate package so sure there's all there's a bunch of extra things on the 250 versus the 350 but this has sort of the things that make it a good daily driver the same as a 250 this comes with the navigation and of course comes with the backup camera um comes with you know the big tow mirrors obviously the telescopic mirrors so all of your sort of driving characteristics are the same this is a 350 so of course it is going to ride a bit rougher it has a heavier duty suspension in the back and it's built for payload so that you're going to feel a little bit rougher but i can tell you and i know if you've watched my videos recently i keep saying this truck is really growing on me this color to me is my favorite color this is the color i wanted before i bought my 250 but it was going to take like a month and a half for this color to come in so i said no all right and i settled on the ruby red which is also a very nice color on this truck i have 35 by 12 and a half 18s general grabber x3s which you know i swear by these they are probably my favorite tire i've ever used i actually do like these i think more than my toyo at2 extremes and I love the look of, of the rim, the 18 versus the 20. I find with a 20 inch wheel on a 35 inch tire, it looks smaller because it's not as much rubber. With the 18, it looks good. So as far as looks wise, look wise goes, you could definitely drive this truck every day. It's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful truck. This comes with the chrome package, um, comes with the tubular side steps. So, you know, that's kind of a must. Are they having side steps? or on mine they have the on my 250 they have the power deploy and running boards which are lovely they're awesome keeps it tucked up out of the way if you're ever you know you need it you're doing some off-roading or things like that has the fx4 package so you get skid plates and uh, the upgraded shock if you have a family or you know you hang with the boys you go fishing you go on hockey trips or whatever anyone who's seen a review on these trucks you know that there is loads and loads and loads of room in this truck right now you see the Husky floor liners in here. I'm gonna do a review on those coming up soon. But you know, you climb in the back here. That's where I sit. I'm not a huge guy. You know, I'm, I'm five foot nine, five, nine and a half, but I have really long legs and long arms. I sit quite a ways back from, this, from the steering wheel. And there is just a huge, huge, huge amount of room in here. Headroom. So this one this one doesn't have the sunroof so you do have a bit more headroom here than what I have in my 250 but even my 250 there's loads of headroom so as far as room goes it is enormous so back here you got your 12 volt you got your two USB ports and you got your 110 plug right there you got vents there's no controls back here for the vents looking up into sort of the cockpit obviously there's a huge 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 amount of room up there and we'll go up there in a second but room wise back here you know what you can spend a lot of time back here and be extremely comfortable and you're up nice and high you feel safe it's just it's just a, it's a nice place to be so you have dogs or you have a lot of luggage that you don't want to put in the back you know you don't have a tonal cover like this one doesn't have a tonal cover yet you flip these seats up and you've seen me videos with my dogs in the back and they're like you can walk through here. It's like a, it's like a highway through here. There's so much room through there. It is unbelievable. So like just repeating myself, but room wise guys, it is enormous. There's so much room in these trucks now and they're all the same. The Chev, the Dodge, Ram and the Fords, they all have an enormous cab now, like enormous. 
So just coming around, we'll just take a look at the front of the truck. If you want to see what this truck has and the sticker price and all that, I'm going to post the video to that at the end of this. It's just F350 Power Stroke 2019, you know, initial drive and whatnot. But, you know, I'm not a chrome guy like I said before, but I love the look of the chrome on this truck for whatever reason. I don't, I don't understand why, but I do. But uh, yeah, we're gonna just jump in the truck, guys. We're gonna go for a little drive here. Um, I gotta return my skates that I got for Christmas. Because my wife, my dear wife, I said I needed a half size smaller. Well, she bought me a half size bigger. So we're gonna go return those and we'll just drive and talk about it on the way. So up in the driver's seat, this one has the full the full center console, and they call it the 4040. This one has the full center console, so you got tons of room for you know your wallet and stuff. This is a work truck, it really is a work truck, believe it or not. But you know, all your files, receipts, and everything can go in here. Loads of space in here. So this one, like I said, is the is the XLT premium. So it doesn't have you know dual climate control like the 250 has. But it's got the big the big screen navigation so we'll fire it up here so in my 250 it has the box up here behind the mirror and that does that has the automatic sensing wipers and has the and has the automatic dim high beams so this truck obviously does not come with that and this comes with like the four inch lcd screen versus in the 250 this whole thing is digital and it looks really good but this does the purpose this is cool I'm, I'm good with this absolutely good with this so you got your climate controls here uh, this does come with heated seats so you got heated seats heated mirrors heated rear window um, air conditioning of course all your volume controls in here you got your audio you got your phone you set up your phone uh, like again, this one does come with nav. That's an $800 feature that came on this truck. You got a few apps here, but you got to have your Apple ID and stuff set into it, and then your settings. And I haven't even touched this yet. So yeah, I didn't I didn't check this yet. But my 251 cool thing is it has ambient lighting, so there's lighting inside the cups and inside the doors and stuff, so you can change the color and stuff in that. But this truck being a 350, that truck being a 250 the that truck was 10 grand more than what this truck was this has the power driver's seat the only difference between this truck and the 250 is this one has eight-way power and that one has 10-way power they believe it's called and this part is power too on on the 250. this isn't really a day daily driver thing but if you're thinking about buying a 250 versus a 350 i am going to make a video on that all the comparisons and stuff but this truck has 3,623 pounds of payload. The 250 has 1,860 something, I believe. The interior is very nice. It's it's nothing special. This does not have the the leather the leather steering wheel like again the 250 does. But the steering wheel is nice. Everything in here is practical. Like it's practical. It's not overdone. The fitment in, in this truck is actually better than my 250. A lot of Ford trucks, they have a problem with this seam right here. And in this truck, it's not bad. Uh, you got your dual glove boxes. So that's nice. In your doors, you got a cup holder here and you can fit a few cups here as well. A little, a little handle, a little nookie here. So storage in this truck is fantastic. Two cup holders back here you can use for yourself or the people in the back. So the interior was well thought out for sure. Up here you got all your light controls. Um, you can set up you know, all your auxiliary switches, your upfitter switches for plows, lights, whatever you want to do. It's really nice, it's up there, it's out of the way. You got a card holder here, a sunglass holder here. And one thing I love about these trucks, and a lot of people don't do this, is this whole thing slides. Because, <laughs> If you got this and the sun's shining through here, it's no good. But this truck, the whole thing slides. That's one of those little small things that you really, really, really appreciate when you're spending a lot of time in the truck, which we do. We generally put like 75,000 kilometers on our truck. We're gonna go for a drive here. You know, I'll talk about the driving characteristics, the fuel mileage and all that sort of stuff. 
but that's the interior guys okay so now we are on the road driving the 350 so obviously there's a few things that make a good daily driver one of them is space now you know we just went through all that there is loads of space inside of this truck loads of space space for days you'll, ne you'll never feel cramped in here whatsoever in fact once you're in here you'll feel cramped in just about any other vehicle to be honest another thing is very important is fuel mileage so we're actually going to reset our fuel mileage right now and if you watched my most recent video on this truck you're gonna know that what we come up with for a fuel mileage number is not going to be accurate because with the tires the 35 inch tires our speedometer is off by between three and four kilometers per hour so you know one one point six to two point two roughly miles per hour so our our calculation that the computer is going to give us is not going to be correct because it's actually saying it's calculating that the truck is going less distance than what it actually is. But I've been really impressed with the fuel mileage numbers that I've been getting with this truck, even with that in mind. So right now I'm going to set the cruise control to our highway speed here, knowing that it is a difference of three or four kilometers per hour. So that's a big thing. And with the 250 and the same thing with this truck, I've been impressed with the fuel mileage right from day one. Coming from driving a uh, 5.7 liter Tata Tundra, which everyone says are like the hardest thing on fuel in the world, but they're not, they're really not, they're really not that bad. Depends on how you drive them. I was able to get pretty decent mileage with my Tundra if I tried to get good, good mileage. The problem is with that truck, it sounded so damn good that I had a hard time doing that. But with these trucks, the 6.7 power strokes, they do get very good fuel mileage. All modern day diesels now, and they always did, but get really good fuel mileage. And if you do a few things to them, like if some parts happen to potentially fall off while you're working them hard, you'll get even better mileage out of them. But typically with my 250, and I've been seeing the same sort of numbers on, on this truck, I get between 12 and 14 liters for every 100 kilometers, which is you know around 18 mpg. Which for a full-size truck that's able to put 3,600 pounds of payload in the back, that's incredible. So fuel mileage, very good. Very good, super happy with the fuel mileage. Power. You know, you always want to have some power to get up and go if you need to, pass cars on the highway, get out of situations, you know, stomp on the accelerator and get yourself out of situations that could potentially harm you and your family. Well, these things are crazy, it's crazy powerful. I'm not going to stomp on the thing right now because the truck is brand new. It's got 600, 700 kilometers on it. So, you know, what's that? 450 miles on it. So. It is uh, far, far, far from being broken in, so I'm not gonna stomp on it. But it has loads of power. In my last video, I did just kind of give it like half throttle and it just took off. These power strokes of all the diesel engines, I've driven them all, and I'm not just saying this because I have three Ford power stroke trucks. They are the fastest trucks. They are the fastest diesel trucks between the big three. I don't think anyone can really argue that. The Duramax is probably a close second, and then the Cummins behind it. The Cummins is just a workhorse. It's a, it's a straight six versus a V8, so it just doesn't get off the line as fast as what these trucks do. They just don't. But power, fuel mileage, all check marks for this truck. So drivability, you know, like, I'm used to driving these trucks. I, it's what I drive. I drive this truck now, a 19350 a 17250 and a 17550. So I drive these trucks, this configuration, this cab, you know, this, these blind spots or whatever, I drive this on a daily, daily, daily basis. Um, so I'm used to them. But my, you know, my wife, she's five foot one, five foot two. She's able to jump in these trucks and drive them 
with no problems whatsoever. The visibility is very good in this truck. And you know, with the backup camera and the backup sensors, um, it makes it very easy to park. And I mean, is these mirrors are the best mirrors, hands down. I don't think anyone can really argue that. I've heard a lot of Ram guys say the same thing. A lot of Chef guys say the same thing. The Ford mirrors, the Ford tow mirrors are the best, are the best of all the Super Duty trucks. So visibility is very good. Uh, parking, you know, is very good. You're up nice and high like any Super Duty truck, so you can see over vehicles. So you're pulling out from a stop or a red light or something. You can see over top of other vehicles to see, you know, potential things that could be happening down the road. So there's, you know, there's that part of it. Maneuverability, you know, handling. Um, they, it, they, they have sort of like an adapted steering. So like if you're going slow, then the steering it makes it easier. It makes the steering easier. So the steering wheel turns easier, and the wheels cut easier. And then when you're getting up the highway speeds and stuff, the uh, steering gets a bit heavier, which is what you want when you're going down the road. You know, at decent speeds, you want sort of a heavy steering. So handling wise, the trucks are great. Ride quality, yes, this is an F-350 with 3,600 pounds of payload capacity. I'm going over some bumps right now, and I'm going to go over some uh, overpasses here in a second. Is it a unibody SUV? No, it's not. It absolutely is not. But you're not going to haul a 30 foot long fifth wheel camper or gooseneck trailer or anything along those lines with an SUV or a half ton. It's not a half ton either. It doesn't drive as smooth as an F-150. No. So don't expect that. But the ride is not bad. Not bad, not bad, not bad. And like I said, I'm gonna do all kinds of videos comparing the 250 to the 350. The ride quality of the 250 is slightly better. There's no doubt about it. It is anyone who knows anything or any sales guy is gonna tell you up front. You are going to sacrifice a bit of your ride quality with the 350, but as soon as you hook a trailer behind it, you're going to thank that you have that 350 versus a 250, depending on how much your trailer weighs. But just really in general, this truck is an absolutely great daily driver depending on what you plan on using it for. If you just need a truck just to drive to work and back, or just to take the kids to hockey, or anything like that, did, do you need a 350? No, you don't. You absolutely don't. But if you do all those things, and you also run a construction company, or you, you have a 30 foot long uh, fifth wheel camper, um, you have any use for that sort of payload, anything close to that sort of payload, then yeah, it's it's great. It really is, like it really is. You know, I do all those things and I do all those work things. And it's the perfect truck for me, it is. Will I get another 250 or 350? Uh, you know, what would I get if I replaced another truck? Well, that's a topic for another video. That's sort of a 250 versus 350 comparison. But anyway, guys, in a nutshell, getting into you know Halifax right now. Maybe you can see some cars going by. It's Saturday at one o'clock, you know, right after Christmas. It's busy. There's cars everywhere right now, and just in traffic and jetting in around, or if you got to switch lanes or do whatever, there's no issues with that at all. Again, being up so nice and high you get to see over top of a lot of vehicles and the visibility is fantastic. You know, these big mirrors are awesome. Um, there's not really too many blind spots in this truck at all. So, city driving, it's a bonus. The only downfall to a truck this size, honestly, is when it comes time to being in a tight parking lot or, you know, you are downtown and you want to park next to a restaurant or something like that. The little parallel parking spots probably aren't gonna work. Underground parking. You gotta know how high your truck is because if you live in a condo, there's a good chance that your this truck is not gonna fit in your underground parking. 
So there are a few downfalls. Like I said, if you have a use for a truck at all, I really can't down it. I can't down it at all. Aside from those couple little things, just keep it in mind, it is a big truck. So you need to know where you're gonna park it. You gotta plan ahead for that. Enjoy your weekend. I'm not sure when this is gonna come out. I did just buy, I did just get something that I'm gonna go out and enjoy today. It's a beautiful sunny day right now. I'm gonna go do some play instead of working all the time. I did work late last night plowing snow, like I said. So I am gonna go out and have some fun today and do some serious play. So stay tuned for what that is because it's pretty goddamn awesome and pretty damn exciting, I can tell you. As always, stay tuned for more videos. You know, we got the 350 now, the 250, the 550. We did just buy something else, and don't worry guys, that video is coming out soon too. The wife is happy with what it is. That video is coming out soon too. I said I would be out after Christmas. Well, it is going to be out after Christmas, so don't worry. But uh, yeah, everyone just stay safe. Don't forget about the 4K Apple Watch Series 3 giveaway. The uh, 1,000 sub giveaway is going to be ending. I'm going to pick a winner. Uh, Monday or Tuesday so like New Year's basically and uh, you know stay tuned for that but as always I appreciate everyone 99% of the dialogue has been super positive you always get a couple guys who don't really know what they're talking about but they think that they do and they try to make they try to make themselves sound smarter or sound better and you know whatever one guy mentioned hey you know and it was the scale video, the one I posted about the scale video, the 550. And like my Kubota excavator and trailer. You're just bragging about your new gear. No, that's not what I'm doing. I'm, I'm posting videos for people who could be in a similar situation as me and wondering what the best way is to get their equipment moved around. They don't need a tandem. They Anyway, the videos are for education purposes for everybody else out there. And for myself too, I can learn a lot from you guys. I've already learned a lot from you guys. I don't know everything and I don't pretend to know everything at all. But typically before I go ahead and, and spend, you know, 80, 90, 100,000 dollars on something, I do my damn homework and make sure that what I'm doing is what I need. But anyway folks, take care. I appreciate all the dialogue. Everyone stay safe. And you know, work hard, play harder. But you got to work hard to play. Sorry, guys. See you later. Guys, so you can see, we are in some serious traffic. We're in Dartmouth Crossing, and it is jammed right now. So far, our fuel mileage is 13.9. And like I said, that is not accurate because of this tire size difference. So a lot of stop and go and a lot of idling and... Uh, Still averaging very good fuel mileage. Like very good, that's what I'm saying. This truck impresses me. Like I think it might actually be easier on fuel right now than what my 250 is. I have you mounted to my chest. It is one handy mount, that's for sure. It, uh, it's a bit better than the one you put on your head because the one on your head's so high. This one on your chest works really good. Sort of, it gives you a, I find it gives you a bit more of a POV view than what the head mount one does. The head mount one's like, this is the top of my head, people. <laughs> but anyway, I just wanted to show you that, you know, I'm not just putting around um, on side roads doing 40, 50, 40, 50 kilometers, 20, 30, 35, 40 miles per hour. We're, uh, we're highway driving and city driving. And the truck's fuel mileage is doing pretty damn good so look at the traffic down there so this is what I'm sort of talking about as far as parking goes uh, the, the shops over here in Dartmouth Crossing the village shops they the parking is very small like it's on a good day when it's not so busy I can definitely fit this truck in there no problem and I probably could go in there and find a spot right now and get her parked but I'm just gonna park across the road here at the, at the theater and just walk across. 
I've ate a lot of uh, junk food and you know had a few a few beer in the last few days so a little walk is not gonna hurt me